Welcome to Dateline Health. This is Fred Lipman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. And really, we're coming to you from the Alan B. LeVan Innovation Center at NSU, which is a combined effort between Broward County and Nova Southeastern University. And today we have a special guest uh, from Holy Cross Hospital Health Community Health Initiatives, etc., cetera, et cetera. And it's Kim Sazwick. Uh, she is the Holy Cross Health Vice President of Community Health and Wellbeing. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lipman. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Well, this is, I think this is pretty exciting as to what you're about to tell us. So you, it's all yours. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity to share with you and your whole uh, listening and viewing audience. Just recently, we had opportunity to put on site a health center that is located at 1409 Sistrunk Boulevard, right in the heart of the Sistrunk Corridor. If you are familiar with this geographic location in Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, it is the heart of the Black community. It has been there for a number of years. And the health center we're opening sits on the original property that Providence hospital was built on. If you're unfamiliar with Provident Hospital, it was a hospital that came to Fort Lauderdale, started by Dr. Mizell and Dr. Sistrunk to care for the Black community. At the time in South Florida, our current hospitals were not providing services to the Black community, and therefore the hospital needed to be built in the community right at Sistrunk. So it, we're very privileged and very, very honored to be able to open a health center for the community right on that spot. We do sit in the um, first floor. We face Sistrunk Boulevard, and the building we are in is actually a four-story YMCA building, also new to the community. So this has been a long time in coming. It's a partnership that we're very pleased with and proud of. And we are thrilled to be opening a family health center that is nurse practitioner led, um, the first one at Holy Cross actually, that is nurse practitioner led to serve the community. Um, because it's a family health center, we will be servicing families, uh, starting with um, you know, diagnosing pregnancies, taking care of babies born all the way through cradle to grave, we call it. So we're, we're willing to see anybody and everybody. Uh, if folks need specialty care or need um, a higher level of care, we have 195 different physicians within our practices that we can refer to, in addition to making use of the hundreds of thousands of health practitioners within our community. And so we're really excited. We really strive uh, to improve access to healthcare, our number one priority through our community health needs assessment that is done every three years at Holy Cross. And we really hope to be helping people change their lives, improve their lives, improve their health. Well, we're very, very proud of uh, what you just uh, brought to the public's uh, knowledge. Uh, here at Nova Southeastern University, we understand that because uh, one of our founders of the original Southeastern College of Osteopathic Medicine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was Dr. Morton Terry, and he actually purchased the building on Broward Boulevard, which you know very well, yes. which provides certain uh, elements of care. We have our optometry, optometry clinic there and a couple of other specialty clinics that are in that building. So we're neighbors. We invite people to visit the Sistrunk Carter uh, uh, this has been a subject matter which has been dear to our hearts and particularly to our president, Dr. George Hanbury. Dr. Hanbury at the time uh, actually uh, annexed that area into the city of Fort Lauderdale when he became city manager of Fort Lauderdale before he became president of Nova Southeastern University. So we have a lot of things in common. But let's talk, let's talk about your uh, your your hospital health community and health initiative program in that area. I, I know you said that you have uh, uh, CRNAs that are going to be in there. Of course, we have, uh, we have uh, you know, a, a nursing program as part of our curriculum here, and we, pro we provide a, 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 an outstanding number of, 
of uh, certified registered practitioners uh, to the state of Florida. So uh, we're very proud. Absolutely. We will have a nurse practitioner who runs the clinic and as well as RN, community health worker and MAs. We do work with uh, your Nova Southeastern School of Nursing. We have nurses who rotate uh, through our hospital. And certainly we hope that they will look at this as a possibility for a community rotation. We would be open to that. Um, we have had nursing students from NOVA, and we are thrilled with the partnership. Uh, we know that in the state of Florida, we're looking at 60,000 nurse short, you know, with it by 2050. So your your program is so important, and the hands-on learning that they can do as part of their rotations, we know is so important. So it's a, it's a beautiful partnership. Nearly 65% of our uh, student population that graduates from our health professions programs stay in the state of Florida. So it's very, very uh, important. It's really important, especially since Florida is still, uh, South Florida specifically is still a growth market. So really, really important that, we, that we're cultivating from within because they're not gonna come from outside necessarily. So that's wonderful. Um, every three years, as I alluded, we do a community health needs assessment. Um, it's mandated by IRS, but it also gives guidance to the community health and well-being program, which I um, oversee. And through that, access to health care, as I you know, previously mentioned, was the number one community need identified by the community in our surveys. And that that is not surprising. And it's not the first year that it came up. It has come up um, several times. And so therefore, um, you know, the the need for the clinic there on Cistrunk. Um, in addition to that, we also see economic stability which rises very high in those community needs. And so as part of that, we are very involved in a transforming community initiative, also focusing on that just strong corridor, looking at food security and sustainable changes that we can help the community to make in order to improve food security. We know that one out of four children in our community is hungry and grows up in poverty. We know that it's an issue with seniors, with adults, um, you know, compounding that. We have the Medicaid loss, uh, fortunately a little less in our state than some of the other states, but rising housing costs, all of these things are, you know, provide making it very difficult for families and Families are really struggling. And so Holy Cross is really trying to see what can we do in the community that can impact the community, work with the community and make uh, system level changes. And so our TCI project, we call it, or Transforming Community Initiative Project is partnered with the South Florida Hunger Coalition. And we will be working over the next three years with the community to really make some sustainable uh, changes within the food policy. So that's another space that we really are focusing on. Well, any time that we at Nova Southeastern University can be of any help to you, just all you do is raise your hand and we'll be there for you. Well, I certainly appreciate that. And careful, I might take you up on that offer, Dr. Lipman. It's, I'm telling you that we have, we have a lot of folks that are out there. And, and I, I will tell you, you know, we have a very vibrant uh, United Way in our community also. And uh, I, I know that they would be very interested in what you're presenting. Let me ask you this question. Uh, are they, are they uh, do you do uh, OB? Uh, will you be doing uh, OB in, in the venue? We are not at the current time providing any OB services. What we are doing is we are partnering with the community OB services. We know the delivery hospital for most of these uh, ladies who will have a baby will either be at the district hospital or the HCA hospital um, that you're partnered with. Um, so uh, it's definitely something we are very open to uh, talking about. We currently have a grant with the Florida Blue Foundation to try and help improve uh, the care of pre the prenatal care, the support needed for those moms who are carrying babies 
the learning that needs to happen during that time period, the early diagnosis of a pregnancy and how imperative that is to get into prenatal care early. We know the burden of stress and its impact on prenatal health care in Black women. Um, and so we have developed a whole program to work around the females who are pregnant and make sure that they get what they need from the, men, the behavioral health aspect of the stress of the pregnancy to the support of the pregnancy to the physical care of that pregnancy that's needed. And so we'll be partnering with a lot of different folks in the community to make sure that of those outcomes. We, we need to improve our health outcomes for our babies and especially our black babies and especially in that neighborhood. We know that the infant mortality and morbidity rates are too high. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, I'll leave that to your expertise. Great, great. And there are several partners in the community really working on this issue together. We work with um, Healthy Start, who has a large grant um, to really look at infant morbidity, mortality, and what we can do as a community to try and bring those numbers down and improve the health of our moms and our babies. Real important. Absolutely. So tell us now, when does this uh, occasion occur relative to the opening? Well, we had our ribbon cutting and it looks like as of this morning, we may just be able to open up next week. So I'm very excited. Uh, we did get our certificate from the state and we are going locally this afternoon to get our business license. And from there, the doors will open once we receive it. We are ready. Well, since this program will probably not be seen for a couple of few weeks, uh, what date are we talking about? Well, we'll be open. I'm predicting today uh, by the 12th of April. So by the time your viewers are seeing this and us, we should be open and seeing patients and busy. Um, our phone number is 954-542-4000. Anybody is welcome uh, to call, to make an appointment, to ask questions. I'm always available as well here at Holy Cross. I'll be over there back and forth, but I know any of our uh, colleagues are going to be very, very excited and will welcome any type of visitor, whether it's just to sneak a peek or to become a patient. You know, there are a, a number of venues in Broward County, and I, I would assume that uh, this is not just res just dominantly just for that one area. I think so, and I, I think a lot of different um, community-based organizations are very aware of what we are opening or have opened by the time this is viewed. Uh, we certainly have not kept it a secret, and we are staff on the community health and well-being team are in the community letting people know hey we have a new center it's opening um a lot of people came to our open house uh to view the center to walk through it to see it to be able to share with their communities their organizations their friends and families you know what it is and who we will be serving um, Holy Cross is open to serving anybody and everybody. Uh, we take all types of insurances and Medicaid. We also have a financial assistance plan if you're eligible. And so, you know, any of our doors are open to our community to serve. And the whole goal for our entire enterprise is really to, you know, help people being, be the healthiest that they can be. Well, one of our, our all-time favorite people who has done a number of shows with us is Dr. Mooman Swamy, who, uh, of course, is, is one of America's great advocates in, in his field. So we know Holy Cross very well. Uh, and Dr. Moon Swamy is a cardiologist. And he has offered his services as well. If we have people who, you know, are seen at the health center who need specialty care, he certainly is one who always is putting out his hand and willing to, to partner and serve. So if I don't mention uh, the Zachariah family, I guess I'll get myself into a little trouble. So I will definitely mention them too, because Zach Zachariah has been on our board of trustees now for, oh, I don't know, 20 I don't know. I it's well over twenty years. So yeah, 
And the Zachariah family has a very strong history with Holy Cross as well. Um, you're talking about all, you know, premier cardiologists and, and we could go on and on. You know, we're very fortunate to have a very strong cardiac line here at Holy Cross. And I think anyone would be happy with any one of our cardiologists, um, you know, on staff. They, they are just excellent. Okay, so now let me ask you, uh, how do you get into, do you go to, uh, do you have, I'm sure you have individuals that go out and do presentations into the community venues, whether it be the Elks Club or whether it be, uh, you know, whatever it might be, a library club or, or whatever, am I correct? We do. Um, what makes us special in the community health and well-being team, um, we were really, we grew out of a vision and a need that the Sisters of Mercy had. And I know you said you were familiar with the sisters. And so you're familiar with their real commitment to care for the poor. And so when we do get those types of invites from various clubs, we're happy to um, assist with that. But our real focus is really providing services to those who need it the most. Not to say that the Elks Club don't need to know what, they, what we're doing, they do. And that's when you would probably get me or somebody else on my team um, not in the direct service care delivery, but we're constantly going out into the community, the rest of my team, to really provide services, education, prevention education, wellness education to those who need it the most. So in those cases, you might be talking about a library group, an aftercare program. Uh, in the summer, we're very active with the um, parks and recs who do the summer break spot. So those kids who need uh, free lunches and breakfast during the summertime who don't have access at their school schools, you'll often find our staff doing those kind of presentations uh, in those sites. In addition to that, I have a growing team of individuals who really promote uh, vaccination and wellness in our community, as you, uh, as everybody is so aware and, and tired of probably hearing about COVID. We started at that time with the COVID hesitancy, really looking at populations who didn't either have access to vaccine or were vaccine hesitant for many various reasons. And we really focused on those communities. Um, we are administration of vaccines is, has superseded in the tens of thousands. Um, and then once we kind of were getting over COVID, monkeypox struck. And so we are the number one provider of monkeypox vaccination. So when we're looking at that, we're really looking at focusing on LGBTQ AI um, populations and getting out in the community and bringing vaccine to those who need it the most and perhaps are not, don't have the highest comfort level always accessing our healthcare systems, which is unfortunate. So we're really working hard to make um, strides in those spaces to not only provide vaccines in the community, but to open the doors to access to healthcare to places that they do feel safe and welcomed as our office, for instance, in Wilton Manors that we have on the drive. Um, so another population we're looking at. So. In essence, we do have a large team on the community health and well-being team. And yes, they do go out into the community and provide all sorts of education, uh, health care, vaccination. And it really does focus on populations who are vulnerable and in need. What's being eaten, what's not being eaten, uh, and how it affects the, the body structure and creates problematic issues, whether it be diabetes, whether it be other, which is so common in some of the community that you're, you're working with. Uh, so I just want to make you aware of the fact, again, here we have a, uh, a nationally recognized uh, nutrition uh, program that's uh, in the College of Osteopathic Medicine. So I just want to make you aware of it. Uh, so you can call upon us also to deal with that. It's good to know that you have that available because we run a very active diabetes prevention program as well as a diabetes self-management education support service program. We've had grants from the state as well as CDC. We are um, a certified provider of those programs and nutrition is a huge piece of it. Uh, nutrition as well as the physical exercise and activity. But good to know that it's another opportunity for our two programs to, to partner. 
Okay. In fact, uh, just prior to this doing this show that we are doing right now, we, we did a show on diabetes. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask Rita Silverman, who is our executive producer and director and everything else. She tells me what to do, how to move, how to stand, what I, whatever. Uh, the, the, uh, she will forward that information to you because I think they, they would be a wonderful uh, foci for particularly the community uh, which you're focusing on right now. And and uh, I will uh, I'll ask Rita to send get the information to you. Wonderful. I yeah I just uh, we're down to the last uh, five minutes of the show, but I, I so I'm going to throw it out to you. Uh, well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. I hope you and your viewers know that Holy Cross Health is here to serve our Broward community. We've been here since 1955, a private, not-for-profit hospital, the only faith-based hospital in Broward. We serve everyone. We welcome everyone. Uh, we have top-notch programs, whether it's orthopedics, cancer, cardiology, neurology, community health and well-being, as I've shared a little bit with you today. Um, it's our pleasure to serve our community. We are Our mission is our community. So please call on us um, and help us strive to maintain what we think is our service. And it's remarkable service. Is, yeah. the, is there a phone number available so we could put it up on the screen at some point in time relative to this new uh, community health uh, venue? Uh, sure. uh, the number for the health center, Holy Cross Health Center at Sistrunk is 954-542-4000. That's great. Okay. Well, uh, we're very pleased that you were here today. We're very pleased that you gave us your time. Uh, you know, this program, uh, we're in our 23rd year, so for some reason we give answers to people and they uh, I guess they appreciate it. Uh, most often, as I always tell the viewers, if something is bothering you, uh, you've got to talk to your doctor. Now, in your case, bringing those services to that community, now people can talk to their doctor. Absolutely. Because many issues, healthcare issues, can be averted by communicating with the people with knowledge. That's the healthcare providers and services which they provide. Just walking into a pharmacy, I was a pharmacist for 30 some odd years prior to my education viewing and involvement. Uh, I can tell you, you just can't walk, let people walk in and just take things off the shelf and think, well, this is good for this and this is good for that or go into a supermarket and do the same thing. No, that's why we have a medical community out there, a trained medical community. Uh, so I always tell our viewers, please, don't just hold it to yourself. Don't be ashamed of the problems that you have. Communicate with your physicians, and hopefully uh, with venues such as the one that we're just talking about right now, that the, uh, the health community uh, center, uh, which uh, Holy Cross has put up in Sistrunk. So, folks, uh, this program is called Dateline Health. We, uh, we try to make you aware of the fact that you've got to take care of yourself. Uh, you're the first person that knows that something's bothering you. Don't hold it from your physicians. This show is called Dateline Health. My name is Fred Lippman. Until next time, see you.